Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Gail Bliss. I would like to introduce Veronica Figueroa Velez, running for Alder for District 18. As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about how your educational, vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for Alder. Hi, thank you for this opportunity. My name again is Veronica Figueroa Velez. I've been in Madison for 27 years. Throughout my professional career here in Madison, I've been engaged in many um, opportunities to improve the city. I am currently um, the director of a nonprofit organization that serves victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and uh, human trafficking here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, through that, I have worked to uh, work through uh, violence prevention and education in our community, um, bringing community together to uh, create community-driven solutions to end violence. I'm also involved in the Community Police Review Committee uh, for the feasibility studies for the uh, police camera and was also involved in the Police Review Committee for the um, policies and review um, and submitted the recommendations to the Common Council. I've been also um, a member of several boards here in Madison, such as the End Abuse Wisconsin, the, um, the um, Community Shares of Wisconsin, uh, and just was appointed by Governor Evers as well to the uh, Interstate Commission of Adult Offenders Supervision, which is in charge of tracking the um, transfer or the move of um, offenders across state lines to enhance uh, public safety and offenders accountability. So I've done quite a bit of work in this community serving specifically marginalized um, members of our community. And I, I decided to run because now more than ever, we need representation on the table and we need people that understand the needs of our community. The pandemic has cast a bright light of um, disparities in our community, especially those who are marginalized. And I am ready to provide the community with intention leadership to address the needs of our community. Um, I'm ready to work alongside community members, governor, government um, entities and people in our community to work together to address our issues. Thank you. Question one, what issue or issues have you identified as being of primary concern to the residents of your district and how would you approach tackling them? Uh, primary concerns on my district, um, I would say that it's a violence in our community. There's a huge issue with gun violence and that needs to be addressed. And one of the ways to address that is really providing opportunities to young people in our community and to families to engage um, opportunities for employment, opportunities for businesses to, to thrive, um, housing, stability, transportation, and access to resources in our community. I feel that our district has been abandoned and we have focused so much our attention into reforming systems and having work parallel sites to actually engage in the community into driving solutions to the problems that we're facing, but also investing in our communities. Um, the pandemic also has created a huge problem in closing businesses, in housing, uh, sustainability for our families. And our, our bus system is really disconnected from a lot of resources and it's not a safe uh, system for us to use. So tackling all of those problems and connecting the community with resources that are available for our communities to thrive and really investing in our communities from any points in any parts of our community from education to job to um, families uh, coming together to providing spaces in our communities that are safe for people to gather and create dialogue to really come together and create community driven solutions to end the violence that we're facing in this community. Thank you. Question th two. There will be an advisory referendum on the ballot in April about a number of modifications to the Common Council including changing the number of members, making it full time and changing the term of office. Which of these ideas being advanced do you embrace? Why or why not? Um, probably the, the terms, um, extending the term, I wouldn't see an issue with that. Although I feel that in two years you're well organized and you collaborate with one another and have um, your agendas 
working in collective power and co-creating together, you can achieve a lot in two years, but having a longer term wouldn't hurt. However, having that as a full-time job and creating this into a job will not necessarily create what the city is telling us that it would create, which is having more people of color at the table actually will create the contrary. I think that this position should still stay a part-time position and we could still make a lot, um, go lots, you know, farther if we actually organize and work together and create things and co-create rather than making this a, a job, um, just coming together as community. So I don't think it should be a full-time job. And I, I don't think that um, making this, um, increasing our salaries to, to serve our community is the right thing to do. Thank you. Question three. Homelessness, evictions, and lack of affordable housing are vexing problems for Madison that seem to have been exacerbated in the time of COVID-19. What ideas would you advance or support to help solve these problems? I think the issue with affordable housing is that we tend to work in silos and tend to address one thing and not connected with the other. And we cannot think about housing without thinking about transportation and how the housing is going to connect with other resources. Transportation is the second highest bill that we face at our house, right? How do we get to places? So we need to uh, strategize on where do we build new places? How affordable the place is gonna be? How do we get to and how to connect the transportation system? And how do we build also um, a system where people can become homeowners, bringing back home ownership programs that will assist people to actually be homeowners is also part of affordable housing, not just building buildings to, for, to put people in boxes and also addressing the, the units in different, um, that takes in, under consideration also family size is gonna be very important. Oftentimes we build affordable housing for one or two people when our families are larger than that. So taking in consideration resources where the um, resources are gonna be and also taking under account uh, gentrification and having a strategic planning for that not to happen. Thank you. Question four. With the selection of a new police chief and the creation of a community oversight board, there is a lot of attention focused on policing and criminal justice, both from the perspective of racial equality in law enforcement and the concerns of many citizens that in fact, crime, especially car thefts and home burglaries is increasing and that police response is inadequate. How would you deal with these concerns? I think we have a new opportunity now with a new chief of police to sit across the table and work together in creating solutions. But this is not just a police problem. We as community members also have a say in how to address this and we need to come to the table. Both our leaders out there, organizations that are working in this issue, but also our, our um, natural leaders how, out in the communities, right? The, the moms and the dads that we have at home raising children have also have to be on the table. Young people have to be on the table and really listening to our folks and creating those solutions and really this in this moment because this is an opportunity to, to have a new person in house and having the opportunity of somebody that says that is going to listen to its community. We need to seize this moment and make the best out of it. Thank you. Question five. Madison businesses of all kinds have been severely stressed during the past year. What, if anything, would you propose to support business revitalization? The city really should take um, a real close look at businesses and assess the needs of the business sector. I feel that we continue to put money out there without really assessing what is the need of businesses. Once the assessment is done, then we can strategize on how to best support businesses and put money where money is needed rather than disproportionately spending our money and then ending with nothing. But I think uh, businesses also should be um, we should be advocating for businesses to also have some sort of assistance in whether that is a moratorium for their bills um, or supporting businesses for other type of loans that are 
probably not just the PPP loan, but some other grants that could be combined with other um, other sources, whether that is government sources or foundation sources or other type of, of funding that we can support small businesses, particularly that are hitting, um, are getting hit hard. And also some sort of uh, mentorship from bigger organizations that can mentor uh, small, sm the small business sector. Thank you. Question six. What measures should Madison take to increase our city's environmental sustainability? I think that uh, right now with the new president um, in house and reactivating the, the power to support our environment, we have another opportunity here and also having a task force uh, locally through the governor uh, task force for the environment, both of those together, we have that opportunity to revitalize again, a, a strong plan to address a climate change. And that strong plan needs to include people of color, uh, needs to include education for people of color, and needs to ensure that not only are we educating people of color, that we're providing also leadership roles within that, um, within that uh, advocacy as well, so that we are full circle addressing um, disparities in that area as well. Because as we know, people of color are also disproportionately impacted by climate change. Thank you. Question seven. On what committee or committees would you like to serve and why? Um, one of the ones that I would love to serve is, of course, public safety, because that's something that I have worked for a very long time. And Safety to me is very important as I raise children here um, in Madison. It's very important that the safety of my children, other children, and whoever is attached to my children, it's uh, well cared for. Um, the other area is housing, as I worry every single day of people sleeping in the streets, children sleeping in cars. Um, and the other area is uh, development, um, especially um, uh, financial empowerment uh, for people. Thank you. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Um, I would love an opportunity to serve and to magnify your voices at the city council, an opportunity to work with you, to work with the community here in the north side, to work together to really revitalize the north side and to create opportunities for all of us to thrive and to have children uh, to be able to come out and play. I don't see kids in my neighborhood playing outside and that makes me really, really sad as a parent uh, that even my own children don't want to go outside and play because of fear. So I want to work with you as a parent. I want to work with you as a community member to create a better uh, tomorrow for our kids and, and to create more opportunities and training opportunities and leadership opportunities for everyone in this community to thrive. I want to thank Veronica Figueroa Velez for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.